the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Shine. Once again, it's Fibber McGee and Molly time. Fibber McGee and Molly. The dramatic story of a woman with her faith in a man. Asha. And a man with his faith in a newspaper. Will something exciting, unusual, or momentous take place in the little frame house at 79 Wistful Vista tonight? Or is that expecting too much? Yes, I guess it's expecting too much. Anyway, here they are. Fibber McGee and Molly. Anything interesting in the paper, dearie? Well, here's an interesting article on crop surpluses, Molly. You don't say. Yeah. Now, take corn, for instance. Certainly. We can take it and we can dish it out. (laughs) Hey, I'm serious. This writer says that if conditions keep up, the small farmer will be completely annihilated. Oh. Hey, uh, what's annihilated? Annihilated. Uh. Why, that means, uh, well, uh, when a farmer... uh, well, now, for instance, uh, Where's the dictionary? It's probably in the closet with the rest of your stuff. Give me your key and I'll get it for you. Oh, no, you don't. You lay off the stuff in that closet. I got all my stuff arranged in there just the way I want it. Now, don't be silly. Give me the key. <sighs> okay. Now, let's see. Which one of these is the most... Heavenly days. Why do you carry all those keys? Does it make you feel important or something? <laughs> what do you mean, important? Every one of them keys is necessary. What's that little key there for? Well, uh, that's a padlock key. What padlock? Well, for the, for the backyard gate we used to have in Peoria. <laughs> <laughs> what are you keeping that for? Are you homesick? No, but if we ever moved back to Peoria, I'd try to rent the same house because this key fits the padlock there. <laughs> you got to think ahead in these things. And you see this key here? Looks like the key to a can of salmon. Nope, sardines. <laughs> I use that to clean my pipe with. Oh, I see. Now, let's see. Which one of these keys is the closet door key? So Say, yeah, uh, maybe we better see if the closet is locked. Let me take a look. Oh, it's here. locked all right. You don't think I'd leave all my personal defects laying around for any prowler to get his hands on? McGee, it isn't locked. Right? Uh, better give me a hand, McGee. This stuff's all falling out. All right, but Dad Raddatt, you might have been more careful Quick, with... help! There's funny little insects all over me. Brush them off, quick! Oh, calm yourself, calm yourself. Them are my trout flies. Oh. <laughs> Doggone it, Molly. Why did you have to go and mess up... Oh, dear, come in. Fibber McGee and Molly? Yes. Uh, tell me, with all these radio shows being changed, is it true that you're going to cut your program down to a half hour? What do you mean, cut it down? It's only a half hour now. What? Boy, it sure seems like an hour. Well, as 
The guy says when he fell off of the horse and heard something bust, that sounded to me like a rib. Well, never mind that now. Ah, oh, dear, oh, dear, look at all this junk that fell out of that closet. Don't worry, I'll put it back, Molly. I oh, don't... no, you won't. Huh? We're going to go through that pile of whatnots and throw everything out we don't need. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been through this stuff a hundred times, and there ain't a thing of it that I can spare. Oh, there isn't? No. What's this old rusty horseshoe for? Well, I found that in 1911. As soon as I find three more, we can pitch horseshoes in the backyard. I see. You expect to find three more, you huh? You betcha. You don't think the automobile is here to stay, eh? <laughs> Won't be if we don't catch up with the payments. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. What you want? You remember that job you promised me to take care of your baby, only you didn't have one, so I was going to bring my little brother over and take care of him, remember? Hmm? Do you? Hmm? <laughs> yes, yes, sure, I remember, well, but I... Well, well, the deal is off, see? What you mean, the deal is off? In the first place, there wasn't any deal, and in the second... My th- mommy had to take my little brother to the doctor today, so I can't bring him over. Oh, well, that's too mm-hmm. bad. What's the matter with your little brother? Anything serious? My mama thinks so. Oh. <coughs> she thinks so, mm, huh? She thinks so. I had to clear my throat there. She thinks he swallowed a dime. <laughs> <laughs> swallowed a dime? Well, say, that is serious. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, he didn't swallow a dime, I bet you. Huh? It was only eight cents. <laughs> only eight cents? How do you know? Well, we were we were playing slot machine, and I fed him to him. <laughs> what you doing, mister? Well, we're cleaning out this closet, if you must know. I mustn't. Mustn't what? No. No? Yes. What? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Listen, sis, suppose you go on home and annoy somebody else. Go bother your daddy. He isn't home. He's working on the senseless. <laughs> on the what? The senseless. He goes to people's doors and asks them how many people in the family and how old are you and all stuff like that there, I bet you. <laughs> oh, you mean the census. Hmm? <laughs> Chucks, I didn't even think a kid your age knew what a census was. Well, I do, I bet you. Yeah? A census is information, please, on the red, white, and blue network. da 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 waiting for Fibber and Molly to return, I'd like your attention for just a minute. If you have valuable jewels, you protect them by keeping them in your safe or in a secret compartment. Valuable papers, you keep in a strong box or vault. How can you protect your valuable furniture, floors, and woodwork? By locking them under a safe protective shield of genuine Johnson's wax. That may seem like a strong statement, but it's really true. When you apply a coat of Johnson's Wax, you are completely covering the surface with an invisible yet very tough shield of real wax. This wax guards the floors and furniture surfaces against wear and against dirt and moisture. From time to time, you renew the coating of Johnson's Wax, and your floors and furniture are given permanent protection. What is equally important, they have that rich, wax-polished glow that good housekeepers cherish. If your home is not wax-protected and wax-beautified, order genuine Johnson's Wax paste or liquid tomorrow. Imagine all this stuff falling out of one little closet. How'd you ever get it all in there? Oh, I don't know. I guess I just inherited a gift for packing. My great-aunt Minnie had a job stuffing pimentos into olives. (laughs) Oh, 
hey, look at this, Molly. The tabaret I made in manual training. Hmm. Yeah? Didn't you ever finish anything? It's only got three legs. Well, they wouldn't let me stay in the fifth grade another year. <laughs> oh, McGee, look. One of our old dance programs before we were married. Uh, I didn't know you were so sentimental, dearie. Is that a dance program? I was saving it on account of that little pencil hanging onto it. <laughs> you never know when you'll need a pencil. Uh, listen to this. Waltz, waltz, turkey trot, waltz, bunny hug, waltz, Texas Tommy, waltz. What, no shottish? <laughs> Grizzly bear, waltz. There. Ah, you had every dance with me but the last waltz. McGee, who huh? did you dance that one with? <laughs> Why, nobody. We sat that one out. In the buggy, remember? Oh. oh, yes. And we couldn't go back to the dance because you sat on a box of Lowney's chocolate-covered cherries and spoiled your white pants. <laughs> that was the night they took the... Come in. Oh, hello, Johnny. Hello, daughter. Say, I'm looking for a nice room in the neighborhood. Got one to rent? No, I don't believe so, Mr. Oldtimer. Oh, come on, kids. I'll pay three bucks a week with meals, or two bucks a week and eat out, for two and a half if you leave me see the funny paper first on Sundays. <laughs> Nothing doing, old-timer. We ain't taking borders. Eh? Absolutely not. The last border we had was a tap dancer. Kept me awake all morning. <laughs> I finally got tired of it and knocked him cold with one of his steel-plated shoes and stuffed it into his own trunk. Eh? <laughs> Incidentally, McGee, where did you ship that trunk? Off to Buffalo. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one fella said, tell a fella, say, hey, say. I see where Scarlett O'Hara got the Academy Award. Yep, says tell a fella. She lost out with Rhett, but she sure got her Oscar. <laughs> Sorry you ain't got a room for me. Slept in the park all last summer and didn't like it. The roof leaked. It's on, kid. I'm getting a little tired of all them gone with the wind gags. Yeah. I don't know how a picture about the bluegrass country could produce so many bum plugs. <laughs> well, never mind that, McGee. Isn't there any of this junk we can throw away now? Well, now, let me see, Molly. How about this old photograph album here? I should say not. That's got all our family pictures in it. Oh, dear. Who's this funny-looking man with the walrus mustache, McGee? Oh, that's my great Uncle Roscoe. We were pretty proud of Uncle Roscoe. He was the first white child in the county to be blackballed by the Elks. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, here's one of me, Aunt Ed and Aunt Carrie. They both had big families. Yeah, how many kids did they have, anyway? Ten between them. Add six and carry four. <laughs> <laughs> McGee, now, what are you going... Well, hello there, folks. I was just going by and I thought I... Well, what goes on here? Have you been buying out an antique store? Hi, Harlow. Uh, this is just a lot of stuff McGee's been hoarding in the closet, Mr. Wilcox. Isn't it wonderful how much you can pack into so little space? Uh-oh. For instance, you only give me about six lines to tell how Johnson's glow coat saves hours of house cleaning because it beautifies and protects linoleum with absolutely no rubbing or buffing. Wonderful. But in those six lines, I think I can get the idea across pretty well that a self-polishing preparation like glow coat is the very essence of good housekeeping. Oh, boy. It's so easy to use that it's easy to tell about. Oh. Ain't he marvelous, folks? That guy has dedicated his whole life to Johnson's glow coat. What do you mean, Pepper? Harlow, they tell me that way back when you were in college, they wanted you to stroke the crew, and you said no. No stroking, no rubbing, and no buffing. <laughs> Even for dear old University of Southeastern Nebraska. <laughs> Is that true, Mr. Wilcox? No, no, I wasn't a crew man. I went out for ROTC. Oh, Reserve Officers Training Corps? No, revolutionizing old-time cleaning. Oh. Well, so long, folks. <laughs> Yeah. As the golf ball says, when it landed five feet from the tee, I think I've been topped. <laughs> well, let's get busy, Molly, and put this stuff back in the closet. You mean huh? you're going to keep all this junk? Can't we throw any of it out? No, sir. I got a use for every one of these things. Now, you don't need this, do you? Huh? What good is one snowshoe? Why should... One what? Snowshoe. Is that a snowshoe? 
Well, shucks, no wonder Billy Mills beat me so bad playing tennis. <laughs> oh, now what? Come in. Hi, sis. Can we... Oh, hey, Molly. Look, it's Gracie Allen. Oh, Gracie, won't you come in? Oh, no, thank you, Molly. And I wouldn't have dropped in if I'd known you were entertaining. Oh, we ain't entertaining. Oh, you are, too. I think you're very entertaining. Oh. <laughs> now, you say something nice about Georgie and me. Oh, <clears throat> T.L. Yeah. Well, I heard, Gracie, that the difference between our shows is that yours is always in the middle of the week and ours is always week in the middle. Oh. <laughs> Gracie, what's this I hear about you running for president of the United States? Oh, there's nothing to it. Oh, you mean you're not running for president, huh? Oh, I mean I'll be elected. There's nothing to it. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I ain't one to indulge in no idle gossip, Gracie. But I've heard whispers about Dewey and Hull and Garner and Taft being in the White House next year. But I suppose they're just rumors. They are not. I'll be running the White House, and I'm not going to take in any rumors. <laughs> What's your party, Gracie? Oh, well, it's my own party, the surprise party. Oh, what an adorable name, dear. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Well, you can count on our votes, Gracie. I always said there should be a woman in the White House. How about Mrs. Roosevelt? She's never in the White House. <laughs> Molly, do you play bridge? No, I don't. Oh, that's too bad. I'm forming my cabinet, and I need seven more bridge players. <laughs> How big a cabinet are you going to have? Just two tables. You need a good pool player? Well, no, I'm having the pool table taken out. The eight ball gets in front of too many people. <laughs> By the way, Gracie, uh, when do you expect to move into the White House? January 1st. January 1st? Mm -hmm. You ain't going to be inaugurated on New Year's Eve, are you? Well, I may not be inaugurated, but I'll be feeling pretty good. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll be running along now. Well, I'm glad you dropped in, Gracie. You think you can handle your campaign all right? Oh, yes, I can handle my campaign, though the bubbles always tickle my nose a little bit. <laughs> uh, well, thank you both, and don't forget my slogan. Face the White House with Gracie. Good night. <laughs> King's men sing. Kapoozalum, Kapoozalum, Kapoozalum was the daughter of the ba. Zoom, 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 zoom. In ancient days there lived a Turk, a horrid beast within the east, who did the prophet's holy work as Baba of Jerusalem. He had a daughter sweet and spark, a maiden fair with flaming hair, and not about her like a Turk except her name. Kapoozalum, oh, Kapoozalum, oh, Kapoozalum, Kapoozalum, the daughter. Near to she, his name was Sam, a perfect lamb. He was of ancient pedigree and came of old Methuselah. He drove a trade and prospered well in gunny sacks and Johnson's wax and ringing at the barber's bell. He met, he loved, he wooed, he won. Kafuzalam, the daughter of the Baba of Jerusalem. Oh, Kafuzalam, oh, Kafuzalam, the lovers were discovered by the Baba. The Baba. The Baba went beside himself, forgot his prayers, and rushed upstairs and took a bowstring from his shelf and came back to Bamboozle. Oh, the youth and maiden, then he took and choked them both, and nothing both together, pitched them in the brook of Kedron near Jerusalem. Oh, Kaboozalum, oh, Kaboozalum, Kaboozalum, the daughter of the Baba. The Baba, the Baba. Exhausted. 
exhausted my impatience with you. Why? Packing all this useless junk back in that closet. How about these old books? What old books? Let's see them. Oh, then. Well, that's my correspondence course in taxidermy. <laughs> taxidermy. Why on earth did you want to study taxidermy? Well, how did I know it meant stuffing birds and animals? <laughs> And there I was, stuck with a chauffeur's license, a city map, and a pair of puttees. <laughs> well, hurry up and put your playthings back in the closet. Okay. It looks terrible laying around here on the floor oh. with that... I'll get it. Hello? No, this is the McGee residence. You got the wrong number. Oh, is that you, Mert? Uh, <laughs> he gad every week the same thing. <laughs> Apologies to Skinny Ennis. How's every little thing, Mert? What's A? Your Uncle Gulliver. Oh, that's too bad, Mert. Oh, my. And they ain't found the body yet, huh? Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What happened? Mert's uncle drove his car off a cliff and had to walk home. (laughs) They found the chassis up in a tree, but they don't know where the body is. (laughs) What say, Mert? Oh, that's okay, Mert. Everybody has a wrong number now and then, except Irving Berlin. (laughs) Well, now, let's see. McGee, why are you saving this long stick of bamboo? Why, Molly, that's, that's got a very definite purpose. If I was offered a job as sparring partner for Joe Lewis, that's the ten-foot pole I wouldn't touch it with. <laughs> See, I got a right. Oh, for goodness sakes. Mm. Come in. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? So nice to see you. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee? Hi, Uppy. Good heavens, what a... Oh, my, it looks as if there'd been an explosion in here. (laughs) No, just some things that fell out of the closet, Mrs. Uppington. McGee had everything in there but the kitchen sink. Oh, oh, really? Everything but the kitchen sink? Oh, my, isn't that amusing? (laughs) Oh, but what I came in for, Mrs. McGee, was to tell you about the symphony concert I've been planning with Maestro Mills. Oh, yes, the symphony concert. Well, it's about time something was happening about that, Mrs. Uppington. I've been waiting so long for that concert, Uppy. I'm I'm even getting suspicious of Billy Mills. I'm afraid he's a non-conductor. <laughs> oh, well, we must be patient, you know. There's been so many difficulties. For one thing, we're having trouble with the facilities at the Eagles Hall. Oh, oh. What's wrong, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, it's the eagles, my dear. The eagles? Yes, they're all roosting up in the rafters, and during rehearsals, they drop eggs on the orchestra. (laughs) You ought to call them down and give them seats in the first row, Uppy. (laughs) Them birds are critics. Yes, indeed, they certainly... Oh, now, please, Mr. McGee. It's discouraging enough as it is. I hear they had a kind of an accident during rehearsal the other night, Oh, Uppy. yes, and it was so embarrassing. What's so? Yes, the musician playing the electric guitar reached for a high note and blew every fuse in the building. No, <laughs> oh, my, but those dear, dear boys went right on playing just as if nothing had happened. Oh, no. really, Mrs. Uppington? But how could they read their music in the dark? Oh, my dear, that's exactly what I asked Dr. Mills, and he said in his most delightful manner, oh, yeah. don't worry about it, babe. Those mugs can't even read music with the lights on. <laughs> oh, really? I thought that was just too gay. <laughs> or am I being a silly girl? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I, I, I must be going. Goodbye. Goodbye, Abigail. she ridiculous, McGee? Yeah. All the time she's back in that symphony orchestra, she's dreaming about Billy Mills. Well, that's always been a pretty romantic spot, down by the old Mills dream. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I says down Ain't by the... Ain't funny, McGee. Oh, well. It was spontaneous. <laughs> Where was I? See, oh, yeah. Uh... Do you really think you can get all this stuff back in that closet? Why, sure I can, and I don't want anybody touching these things either but me. They're too valuable. Oh. I'd have had it done an hour ago if I hadn't been interfered with. All right, you do it then. Huh? I've got some work to do in the kitchen. All right, I'll get it. Dad, rat it. I wish somebody would crawl in through the window just for the novelty of it. <laughs> come in. Oh, there, McGee. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I just thought I'd come by and tell you that... Well, my goodness, what's all this? Oh, just something out of my closet. I'm straightening it out. Hey, Gildersleeve, put that hatchet down. I'll do no such thing. That's my Boy Scout hatchet you borrowed last summer. <laughs> Dad, rat it, it ain't nothing of the kind. That's my Boy Scout hatchet. Ooh. Look at the insignia on the handle there. Owl Patrol. Well, I belong to the Owl Patrol myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you and the Owl Patrol. <laughs> Why, you don't even know the password of the Owl Patrol. Who? Well, somebody must have told you. <laughs> Listen here, Gildersleeve, I bet you don't know a thing about scouting. I do, too. 
I was an Eagle Scout with 26 merit badges. Oh, go on. Can you tie a sheep shank? Can you imitate the mating cry of the chimney swallow? Uh, Can you tell which way is north when you're lost in the woods? Certainly. How? I face south and then turn around quick. Look, <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve, if you're really a scout, you can do your daily good turn by scramming out of here and letting me finish putting this stuff back in the closet. Well, all right, McGee. Well, you're sure that isn't my hatchet? On my word of honor as a member of the Owl Patrol, Gildersleeve. Well, all right, McGee. I'll see you later. Okay. Uh, say. Huh? Uh, give me the password again, will you? <laughs> Who? Who? <laughs> oh, boy, Scout, that guy couldn't build a fire in a hay mob by rubbing two sticks of dynamite together. <laughs> oh, well, I've got to get the rest of that. Looks like about all of it. Yep. It's all packed back in there. Boy, what a job. Hey, Molly! Molly! What is it, Mr. Daly? Look, oh. I got all that stuff back in the closet. All straightened out. Splendid, McGee, splendid. Yeah. And after this one, you want something out of there, let me get it for you. All right. Yeah. But now that you got the dictionary out of there, why don't you leave it out? We may need it again. Oh. What's the matter? I forgot to leave it out. I, I packed the dictionary back in there. Oh, heavenly day. Now, hey, now you stay away from there. I know exactly where I put it. Well, okay. I can get it out without the How do you spell annihilated? <laughs> Bibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to read you a brief letter received recently from a gentleman in New York State. For the past 15 years, he writes, I have installed many linoleum floors as I am a linoleum layer. Most every time upon completion of an installation, I am asked this question. How can I preserve or improve the finish? Well, since Glow Coat has been on the market, I have used it with perfect satisfaction. So I always answer, use Johnson's Glow Coat and no other. Well, now coming from a man who knows his linoleum, that is a pretty sound recommendation. Glow Coat does preserve and improve linoleum, whether it's new or old. It makes linoleum last longer, makes it easy to keep clean, brings out the colors. And remember, there's no rubbing or buffing with Glow Coat because it's self-polishing. You simply apply and let dry. In 20 minutes, your floor is sparkling with new beauty. Try Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on your floors. Order a can tomorrow. Now, look, McGee, that junk of yours is positively not going back into that closet. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yeah. hey, wait a minute, wrong routine. <laughs> well, all right, then. But if it does go back in there, I'll arrange it myself. Now, you keep your hands off at this time. You gonna do it all by yourself? I am. Fine. As the fat lady says when she took off her corset, that lets me out. McGee. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's...